Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. Today it's just starting to turn fall. Um, in fact, I think the first technical day of astrological fall was earlier this week. And we actually had some decent fall kind of weather here, not today, but yesterday. And so we started feeling like we wanted comforting fall foods. And I remembered that I'd seen this recipe and I wanted to make it. So today we're going to be working from Sam Jones's Whole Hog Barbecue book, and we're not making barbecue. We are making country style steak and gravy. So this is a little bit different than anything that I, I have made myself. Um, he uses just a, a cut of steak. Uh, I, I was expecting like maybe cube steak or even like um, burgers, sort of like burger patties, but no, he uses eye of round steaks, which I'm going to have to cut myself because I think I sent my husband to the grocery store and he could not find those. I don't know if they ever sell them or not, but anyway, um, but he bought an eye of round roast. So I'm going to cut that myself. Um, he also makes quite a lot. So we're making a little bit less of the actual steak part of this, although we're going to make the same amount of gravy. Um, but it's a really simple recipe. So to start with, I have flour in a jar or other container with a tight fitting lid. So I have just a quart jar here and we're going to be adding this um, packet of Lipton Beefy Onion Soup Mix. So that is what he calls for exactly in the recipe. And so that's what we got. And we're just going to dump this in here with the plain all-purpose flour. Now, I should have probably gotten a larger jar, but I didn't want to deal with that. Quart jars will go in my dishwasher and larger ones will not um, because I'm supposed to put basically a quart of hot water in here. Um, so I'm going to get hot water from the tap and I'm going to put as much in as I can and shake it up and then probably add some more, shake it up. We'll see how it goes. We'll see if I can get it all in there. I don't think so, but we'll see. So I've never done it this way before where I just kind of mix the flour with water before, but that's what he calls for. So that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna put about that much in for now and shake it up. It smells like beefy onion soup in here now or at least right here it does. And that is hot water, just as hot as it'll come out of my um, tap. Let's see how much more I can get in there. Almost, but not quite all of it. I'll add the rest when we put it in the pan and, and then it'll be just right. But this, this should be fine. So, so just shake vigorously to combine. And it actually seems like it combined pretty well. We're going to set this aside and before we add it again, we'll shake it up again. So let me move this over towards my stove and get the meat. Okay, so we have a, an eye of round roast here, which I am going to slice into as many as I can get that are half an inch thick. No. Here, well, first. I don't think each one of these is about eight ounces, but I think we have basically the number that he says from this one. So I don't, I don't, I don't know if you can get an eight ounce uh, eye of round steak. Okay. So all we have to do now is season these with salt and pepper and there's no measurements. So I'm just gonna season them like I normally would. like a good amount of pepper on these, on this sort of meat, I think. Um, 
And I'm gonna just season one side and then after I put them in the pan to sear, I will season, I'll put this side down and I will season the other side. He says to um, pat them dry, but this was pretty dry. So I didn't have, didn't really worry about that. But now we're gonna move over to the stove where we are supposed to have a 15 inch cast iron skillet, but I do not have one of those. I have a 12 inch cast iron skillet. So we will definitely have to um, sear these in batches, but I'm gonna go ahead and get that heating up uh, with some vegetable oil on medium high heat. So we will see you at the stove. Okay, my oil is starting to smoke and this is the high heat oil, so we got to go. I'm gonna put these in here. And now I'm sizzling. Did you say something? It's my sound guy hates. But I don't want to crowd these. But I'm gonna salt and pepper this side now. He says three, three to four minutes per side. We'll see if it takes that long or longer. I don't know. They seem to be cooking pretty well and press them down if necessary to get a good seal. Now I'm trying not to crowd the pan so they will get a good seal. Good. All right, that was about three minutes, I think, on that side, so not too bad. But they do tend to cup. Uh, so I was pressing down to get the middle, and then now this one it will be the other way, so the middle will get seared and the outside won't. But I'm going to keep doing that with all of these. And it's so loud, you probably won't see most of this part. Um, but I'm going to maybe add another one in and season the rest of these since I have space to turn them over now. Um, but yeah, we're going to get them all seared and then we'll show you what to do next. Okay, I got it all seared and I've turned the stove down to medium and we are not wiping out the pan. We are just pouring, I just shook this up again and we're pouring it in. I'm gonna put the rest of the water in here and just kind of rinse out my jar a little bit. Just since it didn't fit before. Now we're going to um, try to scrape up any stuff that's on the bottom, bring this to a boil. Um, I might end up getting out the whisk, but we're supposed to cook the flour uh, and the gravy here together and scrape up this for a couple minutes. I think bring it to a boil. doesn't say bring it to a boil, but I think that's kind of what we need to do. Now I'm going to get a little more water in my um, measuring cup because he says we might need to add more water just to get the gravy where you want it. Um, but we're also going to cook it for a little while after this. And um, if it gets too thick, I like to have some water to add to it. It seems pretty thick right now. It's just starting to come to a boil. But he does say you want a dense gravy here. I'm a little annoyed because it looks a little lumpy. 
So, yeah. so I think I'm going to get the whisk. I just didn't want to do it because I only have my really big one or a really small one. This tastes vaguely beefy, but flour will, I mean, salt and pepper will do a lot to um, help that taste better. I'm being generous with the pepper. All right. Now we're supposed to turn the heat to low should probably taste it again. That's better. Um, and the steaks do have salt on them, so mm, that'll add a little bit more. Right. So um, I turned it down to a three, which is kind of medium low. I'm gonna get these steaks in there as best I can. I want to kind of nestle them in the gravy. And I'm going to put all of these juices that have collected on the plate also in here. Because that will only be good. And I'm kind of make that one fit in. We definitely want the gravy to kind of cover them because at this point we are going for a braise. We're going to let this cook for 15 to 20 minutes, he says, or until it is um, fork tender. So I feel like that might take a little longer than 15 to 20 minutes, but I'm going to set a timer for 15 minutes and we will check at 15 minutes. All right. It's been about 20 minutes. I checked it at 15 minutes and it wasn't done to my liking. It still seemed very tough. I, I suspect it's still going to be pretty tough at 20 minutes, but we are going to take uh, the small piece out over here that was the end piece and just see how not tender it is. It's supposed to be fork tender. I mean, I can get the fork in it, but it seems pretty... Yeah, it's not fork tender. We think it's going to be a little while. I ended up turning mine to about two and a half, which is still a little medium low on my stove. Um, but uh, we're going to test this out. We're going to let this sit for a little bit longer. Um, and I'll let you know how long it takes before it's done the way I think is fork tender. So we'll see you in, I don't know, I'm going to wait at least another 15 minutes and test it again. This is a very lean, kind of tough cut, so I, I knew that 15 to 20 minutes was going to be a little, a little low for the timing. This has been simmering for a really long time, so it is about two hours since we started. So it's been simmering for at least an hour and a half, um, such that I think my gravy is even a little too thin probably at this point because it has thickened. First it thinned out a bit as the steak lost or, or donated its its liquid, its um, moisture to the gravy, and now it's just sort of evaporated more. So it's kind of thickened again. Um, they are still not super tender. I've tried a piece occasionally. I think it's okay. 
Um, but we're just we're gonna eat. It's been way longer than he said. I mean, they're certainly cooked, but they are not tender. So I take a little issue with the timing on this recipe. But what I'm gonna do is get my vegetables finished. I'm just gonna broil them very quickly in the oven. Um, everything else is done and just kind of sitting and waiting because um, we expected it to be done at half an hour at the most, but that's not what happened. Um, I'm gonna, when I'm ready, when everything else is done, I'm going to take all of the steak out, whisk up the gravy, make sure that it is not too thick, maybe thin it out a little bit, and then we're gonna eat, so. We'll show you what it looks like and let you know what we think in just a minute. On this episode of Cooking the Books with Heather, you watched me make country style steak and gravy from Sam Jones's Whole Hog Barbecue cookbook. So uh, this was something I had marked to wait for when the weather turned a little chillier and it did actually finally start feeling a little bit like fall. We're currently on the first day of October. Um, but so it finally started feeling a little bit like fall last week. And we made this recipe. Um, the gravy was delicious and it was a different way to make gravy that I've never tried before. Usually I make a roux, cook the flour in some fat, um, and then add broth to that. And that's sort of the standard way to make gravy. This one, uh, you shake up the flour with warm water and a seasoning packet. And when you, you're done browning the meat, you just put that in the pan and cook it like that. So that was new to me, but it worked out very well, and if you have a hard time making gravy the usual way, you should try this, because I think you probably can't go wrong with this. As long as you shake it up, use the hot water, should be okay, it worked out for me, and I'd never done it before, so hopefully it will work out for you. Um, we really enjoyed it, the flavor, it was good. Really all you put in it is salt and pepper, and then that uh, Lipton beefy onion soup mix, which is so easy for a, uh, a weeknight meal or something like that. Making gravy that way would be really, really easy. But I would say, I'm not sure an eye round steak will ever get as tender as I want my steak, my country style steak. Um, so I would use the gravy recipe again, but I might use it on like a cubed steak, which may be the same cut. I don't know what cut they use, honestly. I know it's some sort of cut that they need to tenderize because um, it's just got lots of little holes poked in it basically is what a cubed steak is. Um, so I would use it with that because that would get tender. Uh, we had leftovers of this. So we, I ended up cooking it for way, 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 way longer than he says, uh, which is only, you know, 15 or 20 minutes in the gravy. Um, I probably cooked it for at least an hour, if not more, if not an hour and a half. I'm not sure if that was in this clip before. It probably was. I don't remember at this point. It was last weekend. Um, and my memory does not last all that long. So when we reheated the leftovers, I did the, basically the same thing. Heated up the gravy, put the steaks in it, and let them simmer there for like a half an hour again. And... Uh, they still weren't much more tender than they were before. So mm, I wouldn't use this cut of meat again. It's a very uh, lean cut of meat and doesn't have a whole lot of connective tissue. And I think that cut of meat is, pro is generally more meant to be served uh, with a quick cooking method, kind of on the rare side. If you prefer it to other things and, and like it that the way this is, have at it. But if you want something that's much more tender, a cubed steak or um, maybe even like a, they do make chuck steaks, which have, you know, which do tenderize. Might take a while, 
I'd have to check. I'd have to try it out, but cube steaks will tenderize much more quickly because I've used those before. Um, but I think it would be great. And I really wish my kids would eat mashed potatoes because country style steak and mashed potatoes, especially with like green beans on the side, like country well-cooked green beans on the side. That is like one of my absolute favorite things with all that gravy and the green beans. I don't know. And green beans and mashed potatoes together. One of the things I absolutely love to eat together. I don't know why, but I do. Anyway, so uh, if you try this out and it works better for you or if you like your steak cooked this way where it doesn't get quite as tender or maybe mine was just weird and didn't get tender. I had to use a knife. My husband did manage to cut his with a fork, but I had to use not a sharp, not a real sharp knife, but a knife. Anyway, if you enjoy that, let me know in the comments down below. Um, and if you've enjoyed watching me make this, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share this with your friends and come back and watch me make something else next week.